Hello everyone, welcome to a new lecture. In this video, we are going to talk about numerical dating. As you know, in the previous lecture, we talked about relative dating. If we have two things, what we can do in relative dating is saying this thing is either older or younger, respectively, to the other thing. That is relative dating. But what we want is something else. We want to have a numerical number. We want to know if we pick up a rock and look at it, we want to know the exact age of this rock. So how can we do that? Well, geologists do that through something that is called numerical dating. So what is numerical dating? Well, numerical dating is determining the numerical age or range of something. So when we look at a rock, a fossil, or any geological feature, we determine the numerical age or the numerical range of that thing. Taking an example from everyday life, if you ask someone how old are you, he or she will reply either I am 10 years old, 20 years old, or 30 years old. Or they will give you a range. They will say probably I am the 90s kid, I am the 2000s kid. That's a range. So numerical dating is determining the numerical age or range of something. So how do we do that? Well, we have techniques in order to get a numerical age of a geological feature or a rock, a mineral, or a fossil. We cannot ask it and say how old are you and the thing will reply to us. We have to use techniques and that technique is radioactive dating. So what is radioactive dating? Well, radioactive dating is a technique used to determine numerical ages of a material based on the radioactive impurities it contains. Since rocks, minerals, fossils, and in more general material it contains radioactive impurities, by measuring these radioactive impurities, we can know the numerical age of that thing. And this is how we get a numerical age of a rock. This is how we can say, oh, these fossils are 2 million years old or 3 million years old or the oldest rock on earth is 4.5 billion years old. So how does radioactive dating exactly work? Well, as you know, matter is composed of atoms, and atoms contain protons, neutrons, and electrons. You have seen this in previous chapter. Also, what we have is isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of the same element with different numbers of neutrons. So, for example, hydrogen here, it has three isotopes. Here, it has zero neutrons, it has one neutron, and it has two neutrons. These are the isotopes of hydrogen. There are elements that have isotopes that are not stable, meaning that they have an excess number of neutrons, so what they do, is they lose it and when they lose it they turn to something else so for example if you take carbon 14 carbon 14 is an isotope of carbon and it's unstable so therefore what it does is it will turn itself to nitrogen 14 carbon 14 here has six proton and eight neutrons which is a total of 14 but this carbon is not stable so what it does is it will turn one of its neutrons into a proton so you can think of a neutron as a proton and an electron since neutrons are neutral so one of the neutrons of carbon 14 it will decay and it will turn into a proton and when it turns into a proton, the carbon will lose a neutron and it will gain a proton. And it will be exactly like nitrogen-14, since nitrogen-14 has 7 neutrons and 7 protons. That's why carbon-14 can decay into nitrogen-14. And still you don't know how we can use this in radioactive dating. Well, just wait a little bit. So this carbon-14 is called a parent and the nitrogen 14 is called a daughter because the daughter comes from the parent which is the carbon 14 so before i tell you how we use this in numerical dating there's something else that you should know and that is half life half life is the amount of time required for half of the sample to decay so if you have a material or if you have a radioactive material the time it takes for this material to turn into half of itself is called half-life so if you have one kilo or one pound of our radioactive material the time it takes for this one pound or one kilo of this radioactive material to turn to half a kilo or half a pound is called half-life and now we are ready to know how we can use radioactive materials in dating rocks minerals and fossils okay so the way we use it this is carbon 14 it turned to nitrogen 14 and and the catch is here. It takes 5,730 years for half of carbon-14 to turn to nitrogen-14. So when you have carbon-14 or isotope carbon-14 in a material, and since it's unstable, it will turn to nitrogen-14. But in order to do that, it will take 5,730 years for half of that carbon in order to turn into nitrogen-14. So if you have a fossil and it contains 
carbon 14 and nitrogen 14 and the portion are one to one meaning that there's half nitrogen 14 and half carbon 14 that means that fossil is 5730 years old because it takes 5730 years for carbon to turn into nitrogen or carbon 14 to turn into nitrogen 14 that's half life of carbon 14 isotope that's exactly how we use materials or radioactive materials in dating we look at the half life of that material and we say the proportion of the daughter to the parent and we conclude that that thing or that material has that numerical H. Let me give you examples of other materials that are used in numerical dating. We have rubidium 87 that turns into strontium 87 and the half-life of that is 47 billion years. So it takes 47 billion years for one pound of rubidium 87 to turn into half and the other half turning into strontium 87. And if we have a rock that contains half rubidium and half strontium, we know that that rock must be 47 billion years. We have uranium-238 that turns into lead-206 and the half-life is 405 billion years. We have thorium-232 that turns into lead-208 and the half-life is 14.1 billion years. We have uranium-235 that turns into lead-207 and the half-life is 704 million years. And to finish our lecture with a useful information, the oldest rock on Earth that has been found so far is 4.28 billion years in age and is found in Canada. And with this, we come to the end of our lecture. So to recap, 